Thank you and uh, good morning. It's uh, a privilege for, for someone to be a second speaker because they could always follow up on the first speaker and what, what he was saying. And this is exactly what I am going to do. Uh, by coincidence, I'll be also talking to you about leadership uh, in probably a different aspect of what Chris had, had uh, talked about. Uh, but it's interesting how things uh, complement each other. Uh, and I will specifically concentrate on the small things in leadership and how could that make you a big leader. Because I think it's important for us to understand how people have contributed to communities, to societies, to the whole world in their own little way. But it had become big because there were certain elements involved in it. If you think of Mother Teresa, she has done uh, or had a huge contribution to the society, right? Probably not just in India, but all across the world. But if you go back to the history of how she started, she started with an idea, with an experience she had with one little child. So big things happen in small ways to begin with. Steve Jobs had this dream to make the iPhone a worldwide usage. But then he started by leaving college. And I know there are students here and they are thinking, I need to leave college so that I become successful, just like Steve Jobs, like Mark Zuckerberg. But the interesting thing is that it's not about someone leaving college, it's about what they do in order to be perfect in whatever they want to do. I'll, I'll give you a small snippet on what Steve Jobs had done. You know, he, he was into computers and he was into making the Mac uh, the best in the world and so on. But interestingly, while he was working on the ideas and the concepts and the infrastructure of the Mac, he actually took a typography calligraphy course in college. Now, if you think, what has got calligraphy to do with computers? And the idea was he needed to develop a beautiful defined typeface for the Mac. And, and that was probably one of the reasons that people were actually going and buying Macs the beautiful typeface in the early stages of the Mac. So he started with doing small things that tweaked into becoming the bigger idea and it made it big. And whenever we talk about little things, we actually go into the direction of looking at what little things that could make a difference in the world while forgetting that it's the little things we do to ourselves that will lead to the little things that will transcend outwards, that will lead to a big person and also to a better world. And that starts with leadership. And whenever we talk about little things, we don't talk about leadership of followers. The first thing we need to talk about is leadership of ourselves. Uh, it, it all starts with leadership of ourselves. If you think even or act upon getting followers, you know, we go on Instagram and we say, how many fo followers do we have? And I'm not a good leader because I don't have enough followers. 
if you don't start with yourself, it's not going to transcend outwards. And for us to understand our own leadership, we need to understand what's our definition of leadership. And, and you know, it's interesting when, when we look at what is the definition of leadership, we go and buy books, right? People who are gurus in leadership. Uh, call out some, some names of, of, of leaders that you might actually read books for. Tony Robbins, Stephen Covey, Jack Welch, Warren Bennis, just, uh, a whole lot of thousands and thousands of people who are talking about leadership. But the fact of the matter is the little definition that you have about leadership is what will make a big difference in how you behave and what you become. So what I would like you to do is, is to think about your definition of leadership. In no more than 10 words, single sentence, I'll give you 30 seconds to think about what is your definition of leadership. Okay, some of you might have had it from the first few seconds. Some of you might have had it at the end of the time and some of you are still thinking and might actually go contemplating on what is your definition of leadership for the whole day. A and that's okay for each and every one of you because we have different ways of thinking and different ways of understanding as long as you finish up with your definition of leadership. That's the most important little thing that you need to start in order to become a good leader. Now, what I would like you to do is, at the count of three, I want each and every one of you to shout out your definition of leadership so that I can hear it. Okay? So, one, two, three, go. Okay, right? So do you notice how different answers came in different ways, right? Some people started to see who is talking about their definition of leadership and there was one gentleman here who was very loud <laughs> into bringing their definition of leadership. And, and that is what happens in real, uh, real life. People shout out their definition of leadership. But by doing that, there's this cloud of noise that formulates on our heads. And this noise does not allow us to listen to the little definitions of those people whom speak with the least voice. While in fact, those people could have a great potential if we just sat with them and asked, what's your definition of leadership? How do you want to go about leadership? We need to understand each other. And understanding is a very little thing that would go a long way into making teams work. And teams will bring up leaders. Small things bring about huge things if we understand and listen. One of the aspects of, of leadership that uh, probably it's not highlighted and it's taken for, for granted is the aspect of knowledge. 
So what I would like you to do is, is, is think of those leaders that you, thi you think highly of, or they are your idols. And think or, or, or look at what's their level of knowledge. And I would bet 100% that you will not find any leader that you think highly of without adequate knowledge. And the fact of the matter is that knowledge doesn't come to us haphazardly. We need to consciously attain to knowledge and, and receive knowledge with an open mind. And whenever we talk about knowledge, we go into education, which is in no doubt an essential part of knowledge. But it is in no way the biggest part of knowledge. Knowledge comes in very little tidbits that will make up your whole experience that will make you a better leader. I was the director of the emergency medical services a couple of years ago when I was working for Dubai police. And one day I was going home and I saw an accident right on the road. There was an injured person there. So I parked behind that, that car and I attended to the injured person, called the ambulance to come, handed over the person to the ambulance and went home. As I was entering the house, my little daughter who was nine years old at that time, uh, was sitting on the computer and she looked at me and she saw a little smear of blood on my, my uniform. And she asked me, she said, Daddy, what is that blood on your, your trousers? And I said, it's from an injured person whom I attended to and I gave him to the ambulance and then I came home. So this is where the blood came from. So she looked at me and asked me a very peculiar question. She said, do you know how to attend to injured people? Nine years old. The director of the emergency medical services for the city of Dubai. A and she is asking me and questioning my knowledge of whether I knew how to attend to injured people. So I humored myself and her and I answered. I said, yes. Of course I know how to attend to injured people because I am the director of the emergency medical services. And she looked at me and asked me another question. She said, does the manager of a restaurant have to know each and every recipe that the chef is cooking in the restaurant? Nine years old, the director of the emergency medical services. And she is telling me, do not boast on things that might not necessarily be true. A lesson in humility that I will never forget. You see, knowledge doesn't come in formal education. Knowledge comes in the small instances that happen with nine years old and even 90 years old. So there, is, there are no limits to knowledge. Little bits of knowledge make great leaders. Another aspect of leadership which starts with small things, is taking risks. You see, knowledge means nothing unless we have risks that we need to take in order to utilize our knowledge. There is safe utilization of knowledge and there is risky utilization of knowledge. And I'll go back to Steve Jobs, for instance. College dropout decided what he wants to do, Bill Gates, and even Gandhi. You see, Gandhi was a lawyer, 
and he was in South Africa. Huge knowledge. Knowledge of the university he went to in, in the UK, his work he, that he did in the UK, knowledge of apar apartheid. But then he took a risk of going to India to fight what he thought is correct. Whenever we talk about risk, we don't say blindly take risks, but take risks that are calculated. And this is the small thing that we actually miss out whenever we say that we want to venture into new things, we want to do things, we need to be successful without calculating what effects that would have into us making it big. And big means different things to different people, by the way. Big doesn't necessarily need to mean money. Big doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be a good business person or a successful artist or a musician and so on. The little things that we think of will make us big and they not necessarily have to be big in the eyes of others. We need to be big in our own eyes first. So there are two basic things that you need to take care of in little ways for you to become big in your own view first and then becoming big in other people's views will take care of itself. Little things will make you Thank you.